I was reminded whilst we were talking over lunch that now is actually very similar time to when I, just after I first came into the GIS industry, um, about 20 odd years ago, Ordnance Survey introduced an agreement with local government and it had a profound effect on the authority I was subsequently to join because they were just about to invest in about 10 Unix boxes with ARC info seats and all of a sudden they had all this data that they had to pay for and it left them with no money to actually invest in a GIS system. And at the time, a little small organization 30 miles down the road and a guy called Tony Pettit had come across this piece of software uh, written by five graduates as part of their um, doctoral projects um, called Map Info. Um, and there was this piece of software that would sit on a Windows 3.1 box, um, was coming in at about a tenth of the price that they were paying, and all of a sudden it was a case of lots of data, uh, no money for a Unix box, but here was another solution. And that combination of Brecon Beacons National Park, Powys, and Map Info was one that spread like wildfire across most of Wales. And most of you around the table, even if you weren't at your organization at the time, um, came and saw one or other of us or Cardiff City Council as reference sites. Um, Map Info at the time was a destructive technology. It totally shook up the complacent world of the Unix box. Now, 20 years later, local government doesn't have much money. Looking for cost cutting and saving on solutions, Brecon Beacons National Park have found a nice little bit of software um, that is proving quite destructive in the marketplace. And it, it just reminds me that um, three years later, we went through local government reorganization. Uh, everything going on in the political world, it's amazing how everything comes around in 20 year cycles. I'm here today really to give somewhat a seal of confidence on what you're doing. Ordnance Survey produce software in a number of formats. We're very strong advocates of open systems. But we do support different bits of software. And I think I'm going to ask you a question. How many of you think Ordnance Survey do not use QGIS at all? How many of you think it is OK, brave? <laughs> How many of you think it is completely, totally, and utterly business critical to us? Good. <laughs> But how many of you think that as a day-to-day -day tool, there are a lot of us within Ordnance Survey where it's now the tool of choice? Within the team I work in, um, we have copies of Map Info and Esri on every desktop. And all of us, um, out of choice, have a copy of Quantum as well. For some things, it's a tool of choice. For others, it's the tool that we use um, to ensure that things work. Uh, it is a very disruptive technology. Um, and looking around the room and talking to people, I think over the next two to three years, it is going to be increasingly crucial um, to the survival of GIS posts across Wales. That's a personal opinion, not an OS one. So what are we doing to support QGIS? Um, I'm going to explore a number of things today. I'm going to explore some of the uses we're putting it to. Um, I'm going to give you confidence in the OS on demand side of things. And I'm going to look at some of the plugins and some of the ideas that we have and what we're working with. If I start off with some of the easy stuff, um, we've seen one WMS feed. Well, in terms of support for WMS, we're also looking at self-help and guidance. And uh, 
at the end of the presentation, I'm going to show you a little video, but what we have done is we've got a step-by-step -step, uh, guide uh, through video on YouTube for all of the major GIS packages, including QGIS, as to how you actually go through the steps of loading data in using the on-demand service. What we are also finding, though, is that not everything works smoothly. And as part of our support to the community, um, when we found that our WebMap tile service wasn't working effectively, we actually raised, um, raised a ticket, raised a bug, um, and we're looking at the moment to seeing if we're actively going to find someone to actually do the work to fix that bug and bring it back into the open source side of things because there are issues around the web map tile service that we're using and how that interacts with quantum. So we're testing, we're active, and we're looking at helping to see these projects expand. A core products, QGIS and address base premium. Um, we've done a getting started guide, and the initial version of it supported getting started with Esri software and flat file into map info. Uh, we've now extended that and put together a number of different guidance notes, um, including support for QGIS uh, within those guidance notes. So this is about helping you move forward with some of the new, newer data products and ensuring that the work that we do is something that can be shared with you so that you're not replicating extensive amounts of work. Styling has always been a challenge. Um, for those of you that can think back to when the topography layer was first released, uh, those of us working on translators spent huge amounts of time working on styling. As QGIS has become more popular, we've experienced the same pain for people all over again. So earlier this year in February, um, we released a series of SLDs for all of our raster and vector products not extensively styled, but just giving the basics um, for people to actually get started and then build on those for their own requirements. Um, since then, they've been over downloaded over 1,300 times, and the community have taken them away, tweaked them, added their own information that they need, um, and brought them out further in, into the public domain again, as different uh, style files. And this is something that we're now starting to look at um, into the longer run as to how else we can support this. The key factor, though, is that the styling is only the, the start point. You will need to look at things further because within the data, there are a number of issues that we have found in relation to specific data that you need to include within it. So having done all that, we haven't stepped back. Um, our cartographic design team have now begun to work on the same thing, but actually using QML files, and it is our plan to release these in exactly the same way. We'll release them as a basic set, and then it is up to you to run with them and move them forward and develop them in whichever way you want. Because there's certain things that you need to focus in on, particularly attributes around font name, color, and height which it will be specific to the cartography that you want. The other thing, though, is it was talked about earlier, loading style sheets into PostGIS so that preloaded stuff is linked through. We love it. We think it's really, really encouraging for QGIS users that it supports this approach because one of the criticisms that we've had long term is when data is in Oracle databases in any format, it becomes much more difficult to style and actually styling and depicting that information can actually be a barrier to performance. Looking wider, um, we talked, a number of people have talked about Print Composer. Um, the Atlas Generation element, um, according to Tim Martin, our resident QGIS, open source, program everything, Python, anything non-proprietary expert is amazing. His words, not mine. 
Um, but he took this information, took it into Gold Review um, post-Olympics in terms of another emergency planning scenario um, and produced a 28-page document showing individual hospital sites that were subject to high wind, which was the scenario that they were working with, in under a minute. Uh, his advice is print composer takes a bit of time to learn but it is well worth spending that time. The output, in t the throughput that you can get when you're producing su major site plans where you've got everything within one file and you just want to go bang, bang, bang out is a significant time saving over the more traditional approach of pan to one, find the next one, pan and position. Um, he said it's a very, very big move forward and is, in his mind, one one of the strongest improvements between 1.8 and 2. And I'm told there's more to come in 2.2, so... Python as a scripting, um, not just Tim, but a lot of our other developers, very strong endorsement for it. Um, the reusability of code, um, the libraries that are already available, um, even some of our more experienced developers are, are saying quite categorically, as a new language, it's one of the easiest that they've had to learn and is one of those that, in terms of bringing something in and developing something from scratch, gets them from blank sheet of paper to first, first stage of something to actually share with people uh, far faster than anything that they've done. They do add the same caveats that we heard before, getting everything right um, and finding information when it's around the emerging side of it where it's not the most uh, comprehensively used parts of the code does take a little bit longer. You do have to look through the documentation rather than know where to find it. Um, but in their view, it's well worth it. Um, and what have we been doing? Well. I had hoped to demo this, but a tender that Tim has had to work on meant we haven't been able to resolve a couple of problems that have cropped up on my machine. Um, but we have been working on some of our own plugins. Um, one of the simplest ones that uh, Tim has done, he's worked with the same autocomplete coding that uh, has been used on a number of high profile websites. Uh, he has bundled together a package that uses our open data gazetteers, um, bundles them into an SQL light database and enables a searching tool from them. Similar to the gazetteer tools that are already floating around but with some differences on them. Um, he's at the moment trying to get um, clarity from within our management structures um, with a view to releasing that and releasing the code. It's it's written for 1.8 at the moment, and we're pretty sure we don't have the resource available to us to put the, uh, the effort in to bring it up to 2.0 and beyond. Um, but once we get the go-ahead, we're, we're hoping that just releasing it into the community, someone else will either see the benefits and work with it, or they'll see the benefits, look at where we've got uh, libraries and things from, and incorporate it into their own solutions to make them better. So where are we now? Um, moving forward, OS will be completing QML files. Um, we intend to release them with appropriate licensing, which basically means you'll be able to use them. Um, we're still looking at the Gazetteer plugin tool. How that will develop, I don't know. I don't think we know. Um, but more importantly, we will continue to support the UK QGIS user group. Um, within our team, we are active users of QGIS um, and it is our intention to, just as I've supported the Welsh group today, um, the South West meeting in the new year has already got one of the team that I'm in scheduled to be attending um, and we will continue to support that through and onward. And that really, other than to give an email address for Tim, for anyone who's got any coding queries, um, that really is just a very quick whistle-stop tour of some of the basic stuff that Ordnance Survey is doing with QGIS at the moment, um, and really just inviting you to 
think about this, think about it as a technology that may be something you need to look at, but really just to reassure you, if you go down that route, you're not going down a route that will exclude you from use of Ordnance Survey data, um, nor is it a route going down which will make using Ordnance Survey data far easier than any of the other systems. Um, we'll support it as actively as we are supporting MapInfo and Esri at the moment, uh, so you can have confidence in that. So that really is all I have to say to you, other than we're going to swap back to uh, the other laptop and the uh, videos that you couldn't see a few minutes ago. I'll just run through the first couple of minutes of it because for those of you that know how to load um, the WMS files uh, within um, QGIS, it is a, a fairly standard load. I just runs through. Some of these do have sound. I'm not sure if this one does. So in 1.6, obviously, the interface is slightly different with um, 1.8 and 2. It's a very simple case of loading in the URL. It is password protected, so you'll need to add your username and password. Once you've done that, you've got the standard connection. Um, sometimes you'll have to re-enter, sometimes you won't. Um, I think in 1.8 it stores the data. You've then got access to whichever Ordnance Survey data sets you're already licensed for. So if you notice here, the, this example has everything, but obviously if you don't have the imagery layer, unless it's under commercial contract, uh, that won't be visible to you. It's then a case of bringing the data in, um, layering it so that the most detailed map in the topography area mapping is at the bottom of the stack otherwise it will be overriding and then bringing it in having changed the coordinate system to ensure that you're coming into British National Grid and not the default of WGS84 um, and once, once you've done that and selected the information that you want you add it into your open the window that you've got open and it will come in um, with a series of zoom layering. So as you zoom in through the different uh, zoom levels, the most appropriate level of uh, Ordnance Survey data is available to you. So we're, we're stepping through our overview mapping through mini scale through 1 to 250,000 to, 50, to 25,000 I've just caught up um, before it finally brings in OS master map um, at the most detailed level. We've also got the VML, uh, vector map district, um, and imagery loaded in as well. Um, and as this example just carries on to show, you can then incorporate it with your own vector data over the top. Um, and of course, we have this was written at the same time we were doing Olympic stuff, so we've used an Olympic example of uh, data that's being incorporated. So that's just a, a simple step through. Um, it's a standard WMS import. Um, if you've seen WMS imports in uh, QGIS before, um, there's nothing new there. If you haven't, I suppose I've just shown you how easy it is to bring WMS data into your systems uh, via this product. I think that, for me, since I'm standing between you and discussions about how we move forward, unless you have questions, um, I'll rest my voice. Thank you.